soak it all in, huh? Well, that flow that we're talking about, I love that word flow because sometimes my life is anything but flow when I'm trying to make things happen. Have you ever seen a flock of birds? I think I've talked about this before. We, you see about 30 or 50 birds and they're all flowing together like this. And even if they make a sharp turn, they all do it together. I'm always amazed that they don't run into each other. I guess it's the same if you're looking down at the LA freeways from a helicopter. All these cars going, you know, 80 miles an hour really fast and nobody's running into each other. Well, sometimes. sometimes. But not as often as you'd think as fast as they're going. There is only one presence, one power. And we're all interconnected. One spirit guiding us all. That's why those things can happen. That interconnectedness. Tony Hillerman once said, the cosmos is an infinitely complicated machine, all working together. Wow. You know, Tony Hillerman is one of my favorite authors. He wrote all those mysteries on the Navajo Reservation. How many here are Tony Hillerman fans? Oh, God, okay. Is that what brought you here? You know, before I lived here, well, I lived here a number of times in Arizona, but whenever I wasn't here, I would read his books because he's so descriptive of the landscape that it always made me feel like I was here, even when I wasn't. So I always say his books that my feeling nature brought me here because our feeling nature is very strong and, and his writings really helped me stay in that feeling. And he wrote about the Navajo spirituality with such respect, with such dignity. You know, so many authors that say they're like Tony Hillerman portray the Navajos or the Native Americans as the victims, you know, victim consciousness. And they certainly have been victimized, but they're not victims. And Tony Hillerman doesn't treat them that way. He gives them such respect. And he shares their sacred stories about that interconnectedness. And one of my favorites, I just happened to, I reread them, and I just happened to read this again this week, about the wind. He said, a hard, hot wind blowing gets the birds tired of flying. One too many birds land on a limb. The limb breaks off, falls into a stream, diverts the water flow, undercuts the steam stream bank, causes the landslide, blocks the stream, floods the valley, changes the flora, and that changes the fauna, and the folks who were living off of hunting the deer had to migrate. When you think of it, you could blame it all on that wind. Isn't that great? One thing touches another, we're all interconnected, and pretty soon everything changes. You can feel that happening in the world today, can't you? One little change that any one of us can do inside of us shifts the whole energy of the whole. Now in the Bible, the wind meant the movement of the Holy Spirit. The movement. The wind blows where it will and you never know where it's going to go or what it's going to do. So it goes with everyone born of the Spirit. Divine will is here to take us to our greatness. And every movement of God within us and around us is to take us to our greatness if we don't get in the way and if we could just surrender to the flow. But what do most of us do? Oh, we try to control it or wait a minute, I want to see what's next. You know, we make it hard for God to move us. Beatrice Chestnut in the Complete Enneagram told a story about a kingdom of acorns that lived under a grand oak tree. And they were westernized acorns. They were baby boomers, probably. And they had a lot of self-help courses, like getting all you can out of your shell. And recovery groups for acorns that were bruised in the original fall from the oak tree. And they had spas where they would put oil and polish their shell, and aromatherapy where they had better longevity of that shell. And one day, a naughty little stranger fell out of the mouth of a bird and landed amongst these acorns. And the, he was driving everybody nuts. He didn't look too good. He was, you know, his shell was starting to break, and he was looking scruffy. And he kept looking up at the oak tree, saying, We are that. We are that. And everybody thought he was crazy. 
They thought he was delusional. But one acorn decided he would at least engage him in a conversation. Because the stranger started by saying, it has something to do with going into the ground and crack, cracking open your shell. That horrified the acorns. And the one acorn said to him, well, that's insane. It's totally morbid. Why? We wouldn't be acorns anymore. Yeah. We wouldn't be acorns anymore. We all have that destiny to break out of the shell of our human nature and awaken to our divinity and become that great, all of that great one presence, one power to open to potential gifts and talents that we didn't even know we had. And the wind, the wind of spirit, <coughs> keeps trying to take us there if we don't get in the way, if we can just surrender to whatever is right now, here today. Now in the book of Genesis, they tell the creation story in very beautiful symbolic language. In the beginning, God, by whatever name you call that presence, and then God spoke the word, and, the, and God's spirit moved upon the water. Oh, I love that part. God's spirit moved upon the water. What's that water? Well, water has many meanings, metaphysically. First of all, in the story of Noah and the ark, Water is very cleansing. It cleanses our consciousness. Because in order to rise up, we have to cleanse that consciousness that says, oh no, this is who I am. Words of truth cleanse your consciousness. That's why spiritual study and prayer is so important. It brings us to that higher state of knowing. But in the esoteric field, water represents the feeling nature, the feminine, the receptive feminine feeling nature. And the emotional nature that can be a part of that has to be cleansed. Because what happens is the creative process, in the creative process, our feeling nature gives the thought the power and the punch. It's like a battery to the engine. That engine wouldn't even start without that battery. And our feeling nature gives the power to the idea in your mind. So in the creation story, we have water above the firmament and water below. What is that all about? Well, divine mind is above the firmament with those divine ideas in a high vibrational state, a kingdom of God consciousness, where we're all one. There's all the love and harmony and peace, and everything is perfect and wonderful. But then here on the below the firmament, where we all exists right now and experience, we have that split mind of the ego that, yeah, maybe I'm divine, but I'm more human today. We go back and forth. In that duality of judgment and guilt and conflict, we're into fear and separation. So spirit has to move through the heart, not the split mind, but the heart, the feeling nature to cleanse that emotional feeling nature, so that you can feel spirits prompting where the wind is trying to take you, what the spirit is trying to birth in you. Spirit moves across the water of your feeling nature so that you can be more open and receptive to spirits prompting. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, said above the firmament, are the unexpressed capacities of mind, resting in faith and divine mind. In this realm, when God says the word, it's instantly fulfilled. The mental image of the word is registered in consciousness. So then we have to look at the law, as above, so below. And Jesus put that law in the Lord's Prayer. On earth as it is in heaven, as above, so below. We want it to be the kingdom of heaven on earth, do we not? Instead of the world that we create with our split mind of duality and conflict and I'm better than you and I'm afraid of you and attack and defend. In the creative process, ideas move through the mind and then the emotional feeling nature responds in one of two ways. 
when those divine ideas from spirit move through our mind, the feeling nature either says, oh no, I'm afraid, not me, no, you don't want to do that. Or it says, ah, yeah, come on, let's go, I'm ready, bring it on. Our feeling nature does one of two things. We either allow that manifestation on earth as it is in heaven, or we resist it. And the bigger the destiny, the more resistance we have, it seems to be. Spirit is always moving us forward to our greatness, always. But sometimes when you get a push or a kick in the you-know-where, it gets a little uncomfortable, doesn't it? I'm okay if it's my choice to move. But when somebody moves me, I know my son and his business just got moved to Portland, wonderful place to live. But it wasn't his choice. His company moved him there, you know? When it's our choice, it's different. But we have to surrender that, oh, this is where spirit is moving me now. I'm being moved to my greatness. You know, some examples are, you know, we get the thought about getting a job. And then our emotional nature says, oh, no, there aren't any jobs. I'm too old. In Green Valley, you can't find work. Or we want more prosperity. And our feeling nature says, oh, oh no, I've experienced lack in my life. That's all there is. I can't have that. Or we want a relationship. But fear remembers what our past relationship was. So we don't want to be open to a new one because that same thing could happen. Do you see how that goes? The divine idea comes in and that feeling emotional nature either accepts it and goes with it or resists it. But when spirit moves across the water of the conflicted energies, then fear can be released and creation is empowered with a higher will that will take us to our greatness. That's why surrender is the most important spiritual practice of all. Doesn't mean giving up, giving way to that higher spirit energy that's trying to take us somewhere if we don't get in the way. You know, Michael and I met in Tulsa. Now here's a man who was from Tennessee. I'm from Minnesota. And he moved about as many times in his life as I have in mine. He was moving all over. All of a sudden, he ends up in Tulsa. And meanwhile, I was moving all over the country. All of a sudden, I ended up in Tulsa. It took us about four and a half years, but one day we realized, oh, we're supposed to be together. See, the Spirit moves you where you need to be. You just have to surrender. How many times each of us moved, and yet we ended up in the same place, blown there by the wind of the Holy Spirit. The Course in Miracles says spirit is the will of God moving in the universe. But the ego will wants to be safe, doesn't want to disturb the status quo. No, I'm going to stay right here. Don't go try blowing me over there. I'm going to stay right here. I'm not going to do that. I have a prayer in three parts. I'll try to take it a little slow and you could repeat it with me. The first part is, I allow the spirit of divine love together. I allow the spirit of divine love to move through me together, to move through me, taking me where I need to be. Taking me where I need to be. Let's do that again in three parts, and then we'll do it in one part. I allow the spirit of divine love, I allow the spirit of divine love to move through me, taking me where I need to be. Now let's say it together and see how it feels. I allow the spirit of divine love to move through me, taking me to where I need to be. If you don't frustrate the grace of God. I love that. That's from Galatians 2.21. If you don't frustrate the grace of God with resistance, with struggle, with effort, and the C word, control. If you don't frustrate the grace of God. You know, both the Old Testament and the New Testament have creation stories, and they sound totally different. The New Testament is the one about in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that has been made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness come out. Apprehended it not. You know, we just don't understand it. Very poetic way of describing the creative principle. There's only one word that vibration, that energy coming from divine mind. 
And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So God said, let there be light. And there was light as above, so below. In class, someone asked, uh, is Jesus the Word? And the instructor said, yes, Jesus is the Word. And so are you, and so am I. Christ is the fulfillment of the word in us. By whatever name you call it, Christ is the fulfillment of the word in us. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Charles Fillmore tried to define the word. He said, word, the vehicles through which ideas make themselves manifest. Every word you speak is like a vehicle trying to make that word manifest. And thank God, not all words are creative. All words are formative, but not all words are creative. Thank God we'd kill each other, won't we? Thank God every word that comes out of my mouth doesn't have creative power, but they are formative. Temporarily, not perfect, not lasting, because they do not have the creative power of truth. Words of truth lay hold of spiritual substance and power and are creative. So we have to be very careful of our words, especially our words of woe, woe is me. They're formative, not lasting, but they're formative. And I always say I'm a, I have to have a five-minute wine before I can let it go, but I try not to give that five-minute wine too much energy. It's formative. I don't want it to be formed in my life. Going back to the Navajo culture that the Navajos have a tradition of someone is in pain. They compassionately surround the person and let them speak of it. They'll even let them speak of it three times. But the fourth time the person gets into it, they say, put it down, put it down. And I would add to that, pull it up to truth. Pull it up to truth, where it's no longer formative in your life, but where the creative power of truth can create a new world, a new vision. We have an image-making psyche that creates this illusionary world. We're dreaming, and we're dreaming it together. We have to focus on what we want, not what we don't want. The winds of change are coming. Can you feel it? The winds of change are coming. We have to trust and go with the flow of that, that we're always where we need to be in every moment. There are no accidents. And the greater the destiny, the greater the calling, the greater we have resistance, it seems. Water follows the path of least resistance. Water just goes with the flow. We have eight new members today. Isn't that wonderful? What do you think the destiny is of unity in the valley? And each one of you has a part in it. What do you think your part is it? What is your part of the destiny? of unity in the valley. And we all have to just listen to those inner promptings. You know, here's where I am today, this is what I'm to do today. Just be in the presence of love right here, right now. But the, allow the spirit to move across the water of those inner promptings. They're taking you where you need to be. And today, Amber is so good about knowing what my topic is. She has a lot of river songs today, you probably noticed. And we have another one, which is the best yet. We're going to be singing it in a few minutes. Rivers follow the flow. They don't try to force it. They follow the flow. And metaphysically speaking, the flow of spirit is here to take us to our freedom, take us to our joy, take us to those higher realms, the starry crown, those higher realms. Now we're going to sing Down to the River to Pray from Old Brother, Where Art Thou? You know that song. It's one of the best songs. In some versions, this is an interesting fact, in some versions, instead of to the river, it's replaced by in the river. The phrase in the river is significant for several reasons. First of all, the obvious reason is all the baptisms that take place in the river. As in the movie, what a beautiful scene that was. Another reason is that many slave songs contain coded messages for escaping. When the slaves escaped, they would walk in the river because the water would cover their scent from the bounty hunter's dogs. So similarity, the starry crown could refer to the navigating their escape by the stars. 
and good Lord show me the way could be a prayer for God's guidance to find the escape route known as the Underground, underground Railroad. Now metaphysically, what is that in us? The river of spirit in each of us takes us to our freedom, our joy, our greatness, and it moves, the spirit moves across the waters of our feeling nature, prompts us where to go, what to do, keeps us safe on the journey, takes us to freedom, and takes us to joy. Let us take that into prayer right now. Oh God, we are willing to let go of this fearful illusion and trust your presence. Trust the one presence, the one power. We release and let go and allow the flow to take us where we need to be. Allowing the discomfort, allowing the ride, the bumps and the bruises along the way. And we call forth that inner presence of strength and wisdom and love and comfort and peace and harmony as we walk together in the flow on this journey. Each one seeing the face of God in the other, showing us the way. And we are so blessed in each other's presence. We just say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the nature of the Christ. And so it is. Amen.